come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast. We're a movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. In our quest for total world domination, which you can help us out with. Yes, you. By going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. These are the internet radio superstars. Michaela. Sean. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Colin. There can be only one. There can. <laughs> what is the one we watched? One. We watched Highlander. Highlander. From the year. 1986. Directed by Russell Mulcahy. Ooh, okay. So oh, Russell Mulcahy. Okay. Do we know him from anything else? Um, we haven't done anything of his on the on the show, but you know his work because um, Russell Mulcahy was a music video director. It feels like it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> makes sense. Did he yeah, direct I, Queen? Okay, I, I was gonna say. Yeah, I fell down a rabbit hole with this guy's IMDb page. Okay, oh. but, let's do uh, it. <laughs> he has 166 credits. I would say 100. 20 of those are music videos. I love yeah. it. Maybe more. But the one Billy Joel, like every Billy Joel music video ever made, like he would find okay. an artist and stick with them for forever. It seems yeah. like Elton John. Yeah. Duran mm -hmm. Duran. Wow. Anybody big in the 80s or 90s wow. who did at least a few music videos for Yeah, it. totally Cliffs of the Heart. Uh, Bonnie mm -hmm. Tyler, that yes. was him. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it all makes sense watching the movie. Yeah. But he made video kill the radio stuff. Ah. Yeah. The Buggles? Yeah. yeah. Nice. That was his. The first wow. video ever played on MTV. Yes, yeah. He Amazing. says he didn't know that what they were. You know, it was like a thing that they he had to come up with the idea like the day before, and they were like, oh, "Okay, yeah? we're going to do this," and then it became the first video played. It's amazing. TV. When I really fell down the rabbit hole, this guy was when I looked at the movies he directed. Cause oh yeah, I got catfished by a movie he directed. <laughs> he said directed a movie called Malone, and I was like, "Oh God, is oh. it be Malone?" Oh, it's not. not okay. It's a Malone. Malone movie from 2009. Okay, and the more I looked into this, more we might have to do this movie. <laughs> this, you say that, but it, if we get Maloned again it, by it, Malone. I, <laughs> the cast they might is, explode. This is like the most chaotic cast I've seen in a movie in recent memory. Okay, first of all, the movie's original title was Give Him Hell Malone, and then oh. they just shortened it to Malone. That sounds, which, I like that. <laughs> but Give him hell Malone. That's, I yeah. Love yeah Why awesome. would you want to connect yourself to the bad Malone? I don't understand. You said this is 2000 something? 2009. Wow. Okay, now wait till you hear the cast, right? Okay, this is a, the guy who directed Highlander directed this movie Thomas Jane. Okay. Ving Rames. Sounds yeah. good so far, right? Okay. Elsa Pataki. I mean, French Stewart. Uh, oh, that's a choice. <laughs> and we're going to round out the crew with Doug Hutchinson, which um, if you don't know who he is, he's the, probably most famous for marrying a 16 year old yeah. when he was 47. Oh, that's Doug Hutchinson. Yes, from, ah. the from Shawshank. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, um, not Shawshank, the Green Mile. Green sorry. Mile yeah, from Green Lost. Mile. Green Mile. Yep. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yep. That That's the cast of Give Him Hell Malone. Interesting. Does Who's Malone? Thomas Jane, obviously. Okay. Uh, does he, obviously. Does he give them hell? <laughs> I, I mean, I've not seen it. We're gonna have to watch uh, it and find it out, like guys. It's a World War II movie or something. No, like it's not. Does. It is. Um, right? It is a mobster movie. Oh, okay. I'm just right. not realizing how much Thomas Jane looks like uh, Christopher, Christopher Lambert. Lambert. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah they have yeah. the same squint. We yeah. keep saying Lambert. Is that how you pronounce his name? He's yeah, he's French. French. Yes, Lambert. Lambert. Okay. Mm -hmm. so well, that's how I'm going to pronounce it for Lambert. the rest of mm -hmm. my life. No, Christopher that's Lambert. That's not how the French would say it, no. Well, Mulcahy. How also, would the Scottish um, say it? How would the Spanish say it? How would the Egyptians, <laughs> the Egyptians say it? I was going to say, because you hire a Frenchman to play a Scot, and you hire a Scot to play an Egyptian. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> Obviously. This movie has a wacky cast. <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, well, let's put it this way. The cast is fine. Just rearrange their them a stories bit. are weird. <laughs> like the uh, the cast isn't wacky. It's just their backgrounds as the characters. Oh, the characters, yeah, yes. yeah. they're a little wacky. <laughs> well, um, before we get into cast, just uh, Mulcahy, uh, his first movie was uh, the because uh, he's from Australia. So the okay. first movie that he did was the uh, Ozploitation epic Razorback, which is Ooh, the Australian that, Jaws. Actually, yeah, because oh, it's about. Okay. A boar, mm -hmm. but this boar isn't like any other boar because it's bigger. So is this like Hogzilla? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Out of it better. Jaws, <laughs> yeah. 
put out of all the things that can kill you in Australia, that's what they went with for a movie? Yeah. <laughs> right? yeah well, apparently they have problems with, I mean, when you watch that movie, they have problems with regular boars, and then oh. there's this bigger boar. I mean, we have problems with boars in America here, yeah. so, like, yeah. I'm just like, Australia, like, you touch the bush and it might kill you, right? you know? Like, you, yeah, you can't touch have. anything there. Sharks, snakes, spiders, they've got spiders it all. Spiders the yeah. size of Buicks there. Yeah. 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 The, the kangaroos. The, kangaroos. Have you yeah. seen that video of that kangaroo trying to strangle that dog? Yes. Yeah, yeah and that guy punches it? <laughs> yeah, it's fucking amazing. He, not only does he punch it, he runs across a field for yeah. like a minute and yeah. then goes up and punches it. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then like kind of turns around just to make sure it's He's walking like, away. <laughs> that's great. I, did, I yeah. do the same thing. I yeah. tackle that motherfucker. Don't, Don't touch my, my dog. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, bad kangaroos. Mm-hmm. Well, he came to the United States and he made a movie called Highlander and then uh, he got Joel Silver and he made a movie called Ricochet. Okay. Oh. Stay tuned for okay, Ricochet. Joel okay. Silver okay. bringing Denzel Washington and making him an action hero. Right. Isn't um, John Lithgow in Yes, that? he is. Yes. Real yeah. unhinged. Yeah, he's like yeah, weird. We like watch that. he looks. It sounds bad like a movie I would bring. It's, yeah, yeah. It it's more like a crime thriller than yeah. an action movie. Again, but, yeah. Joel Silver <laughs> produced Russell Mulcahy. Eventually, he did a movie called. When I heard about it, it was called Talos the Mummy, but it was later retitled Tale of the Mummy mm-hmm. with Jason Scott Lee, who played okay. Bruce Lee and Dragon, the right. Bruce Lee story. Okay. Huh. Um, he did a lot of Tales from the Crypt episodes, and nice. he did Resident Evil Extinction, which if you're like, which oh. one was that? That was the one in the post-apocalyptic Las Vegas. Which number is this? Number three. Uh, okay. okay. There you go. <laughs> wow. <Right>. So, <laughs> Russell McKay, he's still out there working today. Who's in this movie? Christopher Lambert. Christopher Lambert. Yeah. Who we have put on the Saturday Night oh, Wall of Fame. This is the, the only good thing to ever come from Mean Guns <laughs> <laughs> yes. is getting Christopher Lambert on the wall. This, I know. It's like in the past couple weeks, it feels mean like we've been leading to this movie somehow. But, well, we mentioned Mean Guns, and then Colin was like, Highlander, it's my chance. Yeah. Like He saw his door, and he's like, I'm going in. Mean Guns is one of the worst movies that we've ever watched yeah. on this yes. show. It was directed by Albert Poon. Poon? Mm-hmm. Poon, who did yep. last week's movie yep. Cyborg, but it starred Christopher Lambert. Mm-hmm. And uh, we also did this movie, but Christopher Lambert may be, outside of Connor McCloud in Highlander, Christopher Lambert may be known as one other pop culture character. Raiden from Mortal Kombat. Uh-huh. Which we did on this show. <laughs> I forgot about that. Uh-huh. Me too. You're wow. welcome. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what a choice. <laughs> what a career. Right? Yeah, I know. True. Like, where Weird. have you seen a lot of Christopher Lambert movies? No. no and I, I, I think I'm okay with it, honestly. I mean, I've seen <laughs> Mortal Kombat yeah. and this. Yeah. Is that, yeah, how much of his yeah. filmography is that? I got to pull up his IMDb because I can't think of what else he's been in. Yeah. Does he, um, not to say anything bad about him, but what, what is his range outside of stuff like this? Because it doesn't seem. To be honest, everything I see him in. It's kind of him. Yeah, he's kind of, because uh, he was in, I, I've seen two of his movies recently. One was Night Moves with, because uh, he was married or is married to Diane Lane. Really? What? <laughs> yes. Are you serious? <laughs> yes. Wow. That's crazy. Uh, <laughs> Diane Lane. I know, everybody's looking at me incredulously. Well, I, I thought right she was there. married to, what's his face? Josh Brolin. Yeah. Well, she was married to Christopher Lambert. Oh. Uh, yeah, okay. okay. So That's they're crazy. Not, they're not yeah. currently married. Um, but she's in the movie with him. Night or movie. James Brolin, I'm sorry. Did I say Josh? It is Josh Brolin. Yeah, Josh James Brolin. James dad. Oh, Josh Brolin. Okay. Josh Brolin, yeah. Who's with James Brolin? Um, Somebody Stry- else famous. Stry- is it Streisand? Is it Streisand? Might be Streisand. Okay. I think so. Um, Crazy. But yeah, and then he was in a movie called Resurrection, which was like a seven kind of riff, but Russell Mulcahy, he also directed that. Um, he was... Uh, he was in Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance, apparently? I don't remember. I don't remember that either. Because <laughs> I remember Idris Elba and Wes Bentley, if I'm right. Or Idris Elba's in, in that yeah. movie? Oh. Yep. Oh, no. But he came to fame in America because he was in Greystoke, The Legend of Tarzan, Lord of the Apes. Yeah. That's a long title. Mm-hmm. A very highbrow Tarzan movie. He wow. played Tarzan. That's great. He's got the brow line for it. Yes. Yeah. And the monosyllabism yes. of it. So. Yeah. I don't remember him in Hail Caesar either. The, the thought of this guy. He was in Hail Caesar? Yeah. The, yeah, the, fuck? He was. the thought of this guy trying to do Coen Brothers dialogue does not connect with me. Like. I can't see him pulling it off. No, because I imagine he was the very quiet one in the Coen Brothers right, movie, right. <laughs> not saying much. He would work for Stuart Gordon. He was in a movie called Fortress. I'm not sure if he was in Fortress 2. Hmm. And he uh, worked for Michael Cimino, the director of Heaven's Gate. Okay, the deer hunter. But he made <laughs> right. the Sicilian where Christopher Lambert played the, the Sicilian. Sicilian. Okay. So he can play 
any <laughs> ethnicity. He, I mean, he really, he has. <laughs> he can is saying something else, but he has. Let's put it that way. What do you think of his Scottish accent in this movie? Not bad. I've heard worse. Yeah, it's not yeah. bad when he it's, when he's. It's not great, but I've heard worse. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I know because I, I was like, oh, he's yeah, he's got a little bit of Sc- Scottish. Going it works on there, so. because it's supposed to be like. I mean, when we're not seeing the flashbacks, it's supposed to be like it's been 400 years yeah. and he's yeah. been all over, so it kind of works that it's like faded. It's yeah. just the flashbacks. It's like, meh, meh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so this guy's been around for a while, still mm-hmm. working. And who else is in this movie? My namesake, Sean Connery. <laughs> 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 well, guess what? We're also bringing to the hey! Saturday Night Freak hey! Show Wall of Fame. Did we do the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen? Uh, no. Damn. <laughs> But we did Zardoz. Oh, yes. Which is iconic. The, yeah, iconic. Iconic. <laughs> Roll yeah. an iconic yeah. outfit, if nothing else. Yeah. And uh, I did not see that, and I'm very sad. I was not here for Zardoz. I know you missed a. Yeah, I wasn't there. here, but Damn I've it. seen it. It's a, it's a movie. And many years there. ago, we did. You didn't do that one? You didn't do Zardoz either? Oh, my God. Colin, did you just do this on your own? Yeah. Bring back Zardoz. Okay. Colin. Okay. Zardoz. <laughs> Part two. Oh, wow. But I you don't know. I think I was here. The, the I could have been. You know, I, I thought remember. one of you. I thought one of you guys was here. No, yeah. no, oh, I never okay. remember. <laughs> Holly, you were here then. I, was well, I don't think here. any of you were here when we did Time Bandits. <laughs> nope. Okay. I was here for Time Bandits. Here for time I fucking bandits. hate Time Bandits. Sounds <laughs> 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 like I remember. Because yes, I remember, I remember because I never want to watch that movie again. <laughs> and who else is in this movie? Clancy Brown. Clancy yeah. fucking Brown. Clancy, Clancy Brown. Hell I, yeah. I had no idea. I love that man. <laughs> yeah, he's he's great. The more I see, the better he gets. He's great. Mm-hmm. And this is young Clancy Brown. Yeah. Yeah. This is before Shawshank. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's shredded in this movie. He's just a big yeah. dude. Because yeah. yeah. I re- always remember, it feels to me that like Clancy Brown, you know, from this, you're like, okay, what range does this guy have? He's always going to be like a bruiser. No. And no. Little did we know. <laughs> no, he becomes a guy that monologues a lot. And he's a got, lot. but he's got a great voice <laughs> yeah. to do to do the monologuing. Yeah. He's got a great voice for it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I mean, later in his career, though, he did like a lot of stuff that wasn't yeah. just you know uh, SpongeBob. You know. Yeah, he's a regular <laughs> character in SpongeBob. <laughs> Very true. Have you guys seen? I think I might have brought it up on a previous episode. Did you know there's an episode of SpongeBob where all the voice actors play their characters like a live action episode? <gasps> Shut up! And Clancy Brown's in it as <gasps> Mr. Krabs, and it's. Surreal. As I well. remember the first time I re- that I it was revealed that he yeah. did Mr. Krabs. I was like, "What the fuck? Yeah, exactly. This is weird." Yeah. yeah, I need to watch that. And episode. like, they're not yes. like they're just wearing like the outfits their character would wear. So it's just like that's it. It's I so love that. it's great. so like like community theater production. Love it's it. amazing. I so want to watch that and watch it. It's okay. wonderful. That's amazing. But it's Do also weird to, to hear those like voices come out of like people. no. But that's what I love. Yeah, yeah. That's, after yeah. after seeing SpongeBob for so long, yeah. I want to see the people doing the voices. I love everyone loves seeing the people do the voices yes yeah. and Clancy, seeing Clancy Brown as Mr. Krabs is just delightful does he wa- I hope he like tries to walk <laughs> like him and shit <laughs> <laughs> my god well, what, what range this yeah. man I know yeah, it's, it's like yeah. one, of, one of America's greatest actors he is. truly truly um, okay, so what had you, uh, some of you had seen Highlander, and mm-hmm. some of you hadn't? I realized tonight that I had not seen Highlander. I, I seen Highlander. had, but had minimal memory of it. Yeah. I remember what Clancy Brown looked like. No, I That's did. about yeah. it. I had seen it when I was a kid. I didn't really remember it. I think my brother watched the show a lot, and I think most of my memory is from the show. There was a show. Sense. There are also yeah. sequels to this movie. Yeah. How many? Well, I mean... It was Highlander Endgame, which was I want to say like that's the, the fifth movie. one. Yeah, no, but that had Edge in it. Okay, so <laughs> so here's the timeline, and we're gonna have to talk about some of these as we go forward. Sure, but there's sure. Highlander, there's Highlander two, the, the quickening. quickening. Okay, there's Highlander three, which is either the Sorcerer or the Final Dimension, depending on where <laughs> in the world you are. There's Highlander four. I think that's that's not Endgame. Oh shit! What is that one? Oh, we can look at that. And then there's Endgame is and the fifth Endgame. one, and then the source is the sixth one, unless I've miscounted. And and there's how something. many is Christopher Lambert in? He is in all but the sixth one. Okay. Oh, wow. wow. Stuck with it that long. Yes, huh? because uh, at some point... Highlander 4 is Endgame. That is Endgame. Okay, so then the source, I think, is the fifth one. So we're saying there's five? Highlander 5 is the source. Yep. Okay, but then there was a TV show, mm-hmm. but the TV show follows the exploits of Duncan McLeod, which is uh, the cousin of Connor McLeod, right. Adrian Paul, mm-hmm. I want to say. It. And then there was an animated series, then there was a Japanese anime, and then there was a spinoff called Highlander the Raven, which I think only ran one season. I remember that. And I think that's where we are 
No. Okay. And the movie has not been remade. Thank Yet. the Jesus. Well, unfortunately, <laughs> I mean, we mentioned it now. talking about it tonight. Yes. It's, it's already in the works. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, we, it's, it's been brought. If they, I mean, they're finally going to come out with a crow remake. Yeah. Yeah. This is going to get there. Yeah. Oh, speaking of the crow. <laughs> thank you for the opportunity. John Polito, who's in the crow, okay. is in this movie, but he's a lot younger. Remember, he was the, uh, pawn, the pawn shop owner in the crow, wasn't he? I got I'm trying to remember who remember Joseph Polito well. is. John like, Polito. Well, he was the he was um the police detective, the bald police detective. Oh, okay. Only well, he was a lot younger. Oh, right, right, right. Okay, yes. And I, 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 you know what? For a long time, I've not remembered his name as an actor. Well, but he is very young in this. You should because we put him on the Saturday Night oh! Show. Wow. The Rocketeer. The Rocketeer. Rocketeer. I know he's in the Rocketeer. And the Big Lebowski. And the Big Lebowski. The, uh, that, private again, eye. Big Lebowski is our <laughs> is our tie-in to a lot of stuff. Uh, wow. So we're, Oddly okay, enough. We're, we're checking him off. We're putting him on the wall. Thank you, MF Med, for your uh, yes, thank stewardship. You. <laughs> All the certificates are going out in the mail. Mm. Um, okay. So Highlander uh, became a cult. Well, okay. So you're aware of this movie. Yes. Uh, what is the inspiration for this movie, Colin? According to the writer, which is Gregory Wyden, if I want to, if I, if I'm remembering this correctly, uh, he said that his inspiration was a viewing of Ridley Scott's The Duelists. Anybody? Oh, anybody? That sounds familiar. Uh, he likes Gregory dual Wyden, movies. Gregory huh? Wyden, the Peter last Bellwood, duel. and Larry Ferguson. Yeah. He, li- he likes <laughs> movies of duel in the title. Yeah, movie. right. Because yeah. well, he had done. <laughs> is that a sword movie too? It is. Well, I think they they, they fought, but the duelist was um I can't remember if it was pistols, but I think it's Harvey Keitel and Keith Carradine, and right. it takes place in over many years in these guys' lives as they like keep challenging each other. You're to saying duels. things I like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and it keeps on going on, and I don't want to say a time period because I'm not sure if it's sure. Elizabethan gotcha. it or Victorian or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, apparently the author or the the writer of this had watched that and said like, well, what happened? What would happen if that dueling, you know, we meet up every couple of years and have a duel kept going on forever? Interesting. And so there's Highlander. Although I always thought personally that this was like, um, like a va- like maybe a vampire story or something. Like if you just it's take very, out the yeah yeah it's an I inherited curse yeah curse of immortality yeah yeah. But it seems like your life's pretty normal for the most part. It doesn't seem that bad. Yeah, I know, right? Mm-hmm. You kind of have like a little bit of super strength. Yeah, I was like, he doesn't really, he really have like the limitations of a vampire. Right, yeah. that yeah, yeah. None of the like negatives of like right. not being able to go out in the daylight and like you just live forever. Drink blood and all that <laughs> stuff. Yeah. You well, just drink souls. Yeah. Every and it seems like they, it seems like they still like experience normal like human feeling as far right. as like pain and pleasure and that kind of thing so he has a real idyllic life in this little castle on this mountainside in scotland his life looks pretty and then this fucking awesome penthouse in new york yeah jesus (laughs) well i mean if you have 400 or 200 years in america or whatever to accumulate all that wealth yeah Yeah. i guess Mm -hmm. yeah yeah what's his day job He's an antique dealer. Yeah, that's right. Antique that's dealer. right. That's right. But it's like, does he really need cash? Really. Because he he's one of these guys who has figured out. I mean, this is. I mean, I guess the the a part of the appeal of the movie, part of the appeal that I've always had with. Um, well, I suppose in certain vampire movies, that's why I really like like Interview with the Vampire. Yeah. Or yes, Bicentennial Man, where you actually. Get- <laughs> I haven't thought of that movie in 20 years. <laughs> wow. But Nobody's like talked about Bison Tony Man in 25 you know, years. Yeah. You get to see the passage of time from like one character's perspective as the world changes around them, right? Um, but yeah, so he's able to like, you know, amass wealth and then hand it off to himself. So his assets just kind of keep on appreciating and he can just like sit there and fuck off, you know? That's for- true. <laughs> yeah. So he's got it, he's got it wired. But he doesn't seem to have what a lot of like vampire movies always seem to deal with immortality as like um, at, at some point he, it becomes too depressing to live. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you got to watch everyone you care about die at some point. Yeah. Even do vampires have people that they care about and all that? I mean, it depends well, on the vampire. Movie. Colin, yeah. there was a whole series of movies and books called Twilight that explored this very idea. So <laughs> that is correct, Michaela. Yeah. And the uh, the interview with the vampire yep. suppose also does that. They know mm-hmm. each other over a period yeah. of time. But I mean, even I mean, depending on what version of Dracula you're watching, there's there's feelings there. Like, mm-hmm. I, I think there's always been some sort of like man versus monster, like no inner, how inner, inner, ba- yeah, inner battle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So how does uh, 
Well, I suppose we should tell for, for those of you who have been living under a rock. Well, have they? I guess this is the question. I was going to say, like, you know, everybody's familiar with this, but is uh, Highlander? Do we feel that this is pervasive enough that, like, we don't really have to go over the nuts and bolts of the story? Yeah, or should we like give that. an introductory, like, this is what it's about? I mean, uh, I think. Well, I think the whole point of bringing it here, or one of the points of bringing it here tonight, was that maybe you don't feel it's pervasive as it used to be. So well, maybe we like should just by asking you guys. I feel if like it is. It, well, I feel like people know Highlander is that there can only be one sword fighting but, movie. But I think that's it. Yeah. So no, I think it, that's, that means, I think that's I mean, all they know. But yeah. it still exists in their consciousness. Sure. So it hasn't yes. been completely evaporated. Sure. Yes. But I think we're down to that. I think we're down to the very basics of what it is. Because yeah. that's all I could have told you about this movie. And I mean, I will tell you that whenever I go to flea markets or anywhere that sells swords conventions, there's always the McLeod mm-hmm. uh, clan sword. All right, let me tell you this. So in 2007, I went to Scotland. Yes, and I'm in Scotland. And I'm like, <laughs> God damn it. The one thing I am going to do is I'm going to go to any store that sells those little keychains that have your family name on it. Uh-huh. <laughs> and you know which one I'm going to get. And I went into every single, every single one of them would have a whole wall. <laughs> and there was one rack always in the middle of it that was missing in the M's. And it was yeah. always McLeod. <laughs> it's always gone. I'm like, it can't be that every single person who comes in here has the same idea. But <laughs> yes, apparently so. Yeah. No, I think it's just, uh, I think it's just family members coming in and going, oh, there we All go. The McLeod's All the McLeods just, came in. Yeah. Yes. Um, okay. So um, what's this movie about? Good question. It is. <laughs> it is. An existential journey through many times with some pit stops to duel and <laughs> to mess with history a little bit. Ah, it's what is a Highlander, Colin? Tell me that. It's a well, person from the Scottish Highlands. Yeah. Okay. Is that it? Uh um, there's gotta be more to it than that. Um a rough well, and tumble person from the Scottish I'm not sure if okay. it, if you have to be a clansman and the Scottish clan mm-hmm. you know, like to actually have a house name. In okay. order to be a Highlander, I think. Okay. But we see yeah. Highlanders from different areas of the world in this movie. No, but that's the thing. What they are is not a Highlander. He's the Highlander. He's the Highlander. He's yeah. the only one. Right. Well, that's is what there I'm wondering. A word given to what they are. Just Did immortals. Okay. okay. But yeah, this is what I'm wondering. Yeah. If the Highlander is what's specific to his powers and being immortal and everything, right. or if something else. The yeah. Highlander what is just where what he's designates from. who becomes this immortal? Yeah. What is, is the there a reasoning behind this? it? Well, I mean, we're giving it in the movie, and it's you know, like the sword of Gryffindor. It's there when you need it. You're just born like with it. You're born you know? into okay. it. Yeah. yeah. This is uh, so it's a like story. Anakin, <laughs> right? Yeah, the midi chlorians. See, is but-, it, but is it inherited? Then is it genetic? Yeah, if your dad's or a Highlander, it, or, are you going to be one too? Well, you or you if your dad's kids. an immortal. Oh no! Well, you'd have so to be the just, only one to have kids. Yeah, I think it's just a supernatural. Like, oh, it's this kid. Is it luck of the draw? Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay, everything without prophecies, basically. Okay, yeah, so I'm going to tell you that I stopped after Highlander three. So <laughs> if it ah. is explained in the show or whatever, I'm sure at some point they have to get into like where I don't know. I the would answer think to this. so. There'd be more interest, <laughs> ancestry involved as the sequels go on. Yeah. But- Interesting. Yeah, although it is ironic that there can be only one, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's sorry. five sequels. In the, in the third one, it was like Mario Van Peebles shows yeah. up because he was like an evil sorcerer immortal who was buried in a cave-in. Mm. And then the end result of this movie happens, but then for some reason somebody burrows into the cave and lets him out, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh no, now there's another one and we have to go after, now we have two again, and we have to fight. Okay, so yeah. so it's the idea that there's these immortals who are born into the world. They've been here since the dawn of time. Sean Connery tells us that at the beginning mm-hmm. of the movie, always moving through you, silently playing their game, which is uh, chopping each other's heads off. Because in the end, there can be only one. Do you want me to read you the oh, no. little the little snip from Wikipedia? Okay, okay. <laughs> In the Highlander franchise, human beings born with the power of the quickening become immortal if they suffer a premature death by non-natural means, such as by violence. After the first death, they are ageless and invulnerable to death unless their head is removed or destroyed. From the time they are born, immortals and pre-immortals cannot biologically have children. So because so he, he was stabbed. stabbed. Yeah. Okay. okay. That's when he was chosen. So okay. if you were born immortal, but you live and you never were violent, violently killed, and you just, you know, would you get old? It sounds like that. Yeah. That's how they make it sound. So it is like vampirism. You have to be like. uh, There has to be an activation of it somehow. Yeah. Through violence. Interesting. It would would seem. So we could be immortal, but 
But we have to get the stabbed 20s, with a large yeah. broadsword to find out. <laughs> I don't know. So, you got to, uh, dear Brailler, you have to figure out for yourself if it's worth it. Um, but please don't go stabbing each other. No, yeah, please don't. No, no, that's, that's terrible. I'd rather not find out. Just assume way. you're not. Yeah, yeah. I think we can all safely assume that. Let's just do that. Just but maybe that that's they're pulling the wool over our eyes, Holly. This is how they've kept us in control all these years <laughs> oh, because we, we won't stab each other to find out who's Islander. Okay. Not a Highlander. Uh, an immortal. I'm Scarlet. sorry. Yeah, there you an go. Immortal. Well, don't yeah. call. Okay, but they use the word Highlander way more than they use immortal in this movie. Like, well, it's they always him calling him, uh, calling Chris, uh, Connor McLeod the Highlander. Yeah. Right. I understand. Right. Understand. Right. right. All right. I am, as we go through this, I'm yeah. understanding that it's because he's from there and yes. not yeah. he is an he's immortal. He's from the Scottish Okay. Highlands, I have to yeah. separate that in my mind. Yeah. Because for years and not having seen this movie, that's what that was. Sure. He was yeah. a Highlander. He's the Highlander. He's the Highlander. And that's what. Yeah. Why he has the powers and everything. Not cool. because of where he's it, from, it, because of what it is. Cultural opinion is that the word Highlander means immortal. Yes. That is how oh. pop yes. culture uh, Okay, well, that's movie. why you listen to the yeah. Saturday Night yes. Freak Show, where that's we right. can set you straight. Yes. Um, okay, so um, he is... So we, we cut back and forth through um, time. We do. I guess that's the whole through thing. Through beautiful transitions. Mm hmm yeah. Sean was in awe. I love them. <laughs> I love a good transition. I do too. It was, and I they do were too. seamless. Yeah, in this. they were great. The sun coming up on the lock, and like while the bagpipe music was playing, and like the mm. glow of it on the lock, and while they just slow panned, I could have watched that for the next two hours. It was beautiful. Like, that was, a, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's beautiful. Like his all his uh, music video talents have really come to pay mm -hmm. off in this movie, and you can't say that a lot because they do that nowadays, or at least silver. Uh, Platinum Dunes did it a yes. lot. We'll get the music video director to come in because mm -hmm. they have an eye for the visual flair and whatnot, and then they end up making something that's not great. So I'm glad we have examples Street. that show... <laughs> what? A name Aaron Street remake. Uh, yeah, well, yes, yep. exactly. Yep. That was, yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, yes, it's uh, a very well shot movie. And it, it does feel like a, a big screen movie. Like It feels yeah. like a theatrical, you know, mm -hmm. it has that kind of size and scale and yes. scope. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're practicing swords on, on boulders like thousands of feet high in Scotland like with, clips, with crazy yeah. views. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they have uh, helicopter shots. They've got crowd shots. They've got, you know... Uh, yeah, the shots are huge. I'm still wondering how they did the wrestling shot. Like Sky cam. So yeah, what is the one on the wire? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay, yes. You're right. Probably yeah. an early use of it. Yeah. He uses mm -hmm. steady cam, all this stuff. Yeah. I remember a criticism of the movie at the time. I think it was Leonard Malton said that the relentlessly showy camera moves will have you reaching for the drama mean. So this Aww. was because now it's like when you watch it, it doesn't really stand out as like this is an overly did it as an overly stylized movie? I mean, but if you're sensitive to like spinning camera shots, then yeah, I could see why there you would say that. that you know? As someone who has never seen Saving Private Ryan for that very reason, yeah. I can't watch movies like that. This movie wasn't bad. It yeah. didn't. I'm fine. Yeah, it is. It is very stylized, but it doesn't seem, or at least you know, watching it with eyes in 2022, it doesn't feel like it's overly stylized. Maybe it did at the time. I think it comparatively did it to but other movies, I can imagine because yeah, it definitely looked different than other movies of this time much more mobile camera in this yeah and he, he shoots low which is something i think when we were watching the movie i'm saying I, i've seen yeah. david fincher do a lot mm -hmm. that uh you yes. know is employed here where i don't recall you know a lot of other movies employing this kind of moving low mm -hmm. camera yeah. you know, low, low camera angle yeah. uh crane shots and things zipping around all over the place yep. following people around Always, on. it's a very active visual movie. Yes, it lots is. of backlighting and all this stuff. I mean, oh, we're but it looks about great because of that. It does. Yeah, because I mean, I mean, I guess it looks like maybe a high end eighties music video or something. You know, you're gonna have yeah. like a lot of smoke and a lot of smoke, a lot of backlighting and all that mm -hmm. stuff. A lot of silhouette. I love me uh, some then, black, some backlighting. Right, but then we break <laughs> into colors at a certain yeah. point in the movie, which is also like really cool. And, it, and then it sometimes, or it's just a police procedural where we just have kind of the natural lighting of the situation. And, a lot and sometimes of scenes, it looks like they put the camera in a hole in the floor. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and, but there's, it, it always seems like it's maybe trick. not I like know it a, is. <laughs> a consistent. Well, yeah, but when when it started moving, that's what I'm yes. saying. That low, you know, it's like the camera's on a hole right. in the floor, but then it moves. Right. That's an advancement like, of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but the, the visual aesthetic seems to like change enough. You know, like, you know, now we're going to do color. Now we're going to do mm -hmm. flying cameras. Now we're going to do this, that it, it maintains this kind of visual interest in the movie as the movie moves yes. forward. I just remembered the the writer on this. He also created the prophecy. Oh. Mm. Oh. 
Okay. Makes sense. Wow. Okay. Seems, which also kind of, of deals kin. with, uh, I guess, immortal beings and, yeah. you know, an ongoing war between them, you know, mm-hmm. that the humans don't know about and all mm-hmm. that. Right. Um, so there's a lot of jargon thrown around in this. A lot. I don't know. There's at least three. There's, uh, you know, the Highlander, right? Then there's uh, the Quickening. Yes. Uh, and the Gathering. Yes. Mm-hmm. What's the Quickening? The quickening is the process of becoming... Oh, also the prize. That's the other one. Sorry. The, the quickening, oh, yeah, the, the prize. gathering, and the prize. What? What is the quickening? <laughs> the, qu- ah, the quickening. It's like it's, it's it, it. It's like the force. I guess. Yeah. Like it. It's like I don't know. I don't really know how to describe it. It feels like a build up to becoming an immortal or something like that. Or because he is an immortal, maybe because he had because he was stabbed. It's the process of becoming more immortal. Well, the, quick- I don't- the quickening is when you kill another one and gain their power. Is that specifically what it is? But there's that scene where they're running on the beach and Sean Connery's like, can you feel that? That's the quickening while they're like just jumping around. Is it becoming more in tune with the powers of being an immortal? Because he could feel the heart of the stag yeah, and everything. That's when he, yeah, yeah, because... Well, see, I don't know. This is well, one of those things. Where I, 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 think, I think you're right unclear. by saying like it's the like it's kind of the force. The force like it's yeah. the quickening is the power that they all have. Yeah, right. and yeah, he but, achieves the highest of that because... Well, when he when kills later, a, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it's, yeah, you're able to sense other living beings and somehow able to sense like their heart rhythms and all yeah. this stuff. Life, basically. Yes. You're yeah. in a higher form of life and you can, you know, feel all the yeah. other life forms around you. And then that is going to pay off in the prize, yes. I guess, which is uh, what they're all fighting for. <laughs> More responsibility. That's what yeah. they're fighting yeah. for. Yeah. But they don't know that. because no. uh, So it's like, who sets up these rules like back right. in the beginning of time? Because they do have rules. Mm. Um, don't lose your head. Right. Because if you get, get mm. your head chopped off, it's over. Uh, eventually, there's going to be the gathering. Yes. The gathering. Time has run out and they all must they come will, together. Yeah. Because- they will be drawn to a faraway land mm. where they will compete to be the only one. Mm-hmm. They know that there they can there can be only one, and they know that the last one will win a prize. I mean, I guess, and you they need can't something. harm each other on Holy Land. There yes. you go. Yeah, uh, but I guess you need a reason in order to uh, you know like uh, have a, a purpose for being, and so that's sure. the, you know the prize. But once you win the prize, you don't know what it is. It's some magical, mystical thing that we do find out at the end of this movie, and of course, they then have to walk back in all the subsequent movies because uh, well, of course. Uh, you know, uh, but basically, the way I understand it, winning the prize means that you get to... You're like an all-knowing, powerful being. It's like you get a strap on Cerebro. <laughs> yeah. 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 Basically. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yes. So you can influence <laughs> the uh, future events of... Right. You get to hear, right. the, hear the thoughts of uh, men and women what a around the world. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? <laughs> right? What a nightmare. Right? I mean, it's a super responsibility, but I suppose the idea... And you can help being, them talk to each other and understand each other. But he, being uh, someone who's lived for 400 years, mm. understands more about the human condition in the world and all this than they do and can somehow help them out. And this is just yes. going to be fucking great once Connor McCloud right? wins and the prize. It's like Hands Across America. Everything's going to be very peaceful. <laughs> If he can win the prize because his arch nemesis is the Kurgan. The Kurgan. Yes. <laughs> what a, mm. what a great what name. What do they say? Like humanity will suffer for centuries if he's if he wins? Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. I do too. <laughs> for centuries or forever. He's immortal. Yeah. I mean, unless somebody True. kills him. But uh, mm-hmm. this is Clancy Brown as the mm-hmm. Kurgan. Beautiful. Comes from mm-hmm. the steppes of Russia. And his yes. people used to throw kids into, uh, what was it? Pits with dogs to fight over meat. Oh, yes. Yeah. For fun. So they're yeah. like Boltons, basically. Yeah. Yes. Essentially. And into this comes Juan Ramirez. <laughs> now, I'm just An Egyptian. <laughs> <laughs> Everything about this is wrong. <laughs> but... But amazing? so right. <laughs> but amazing. Right. Just based on outfits alone. Mm-hmm. I was trying to figure out if like Sean Connery was having like a career downturn at the time that he accepted a bit part in Highlander. I mean, he's, you know, second build. Yeah. He really doesn't have that much screen time. Yeah. What? Like maybe 10 minutes, 15 minutes tops. It's fairly significant, yeah. though, because he's the mentor. Yep. role. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, he's one Villa Lobos. Uh, oh, damn. Can you get the whole thing? No, I don't think so. Oh, no. <laughs> Um, who's in? He, he's a he. Well, he comes in. It says that he introduces himself as a Spaniard. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that he served in the court of a Spanish king. Yeah. But prior to that, he was from um, Japan, 
where he was married to a Japanese princess whose mm-hmm. father gave him this like right. priceless katana. But before that, originally he's from Egypt. <laughs> yeah. And he's been around for 2000 years. This is great stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> all played by Scotsman, Sean Connery doing no accent. Nope. At all. None. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So uh, like Juan Sanchez shit. It won't give me the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's too long for the internet. The internet's like we're it not, really not, is. not doing that. <laughs> Keep going. I will inform you later. Well, okay. So Connor back in the past, right? So basically we're cutting between how he became uh, Connor McClaw, mm-hmm. or, you know, whatever. Sorry. How he uh, became Russell Nash, the guy who existed in New York City at the time of the gathering mm-hmm. and the life that has led him here. Mm-hmm. Um, he's Kicked out of his village um, mm-hmm. by James Cosmo. Yeah, banished because he didn't die. Yeah. Yes. He was on death's door and came yeah. back 100%. And he's clearly... And that's the devil. It's the devil. Yeah. Devil. People who... who, who had known why would that not be a miracle? Why right, would that exactly. not be the opposite? Exactly. Because that's how, thing, that's how people <laughs> thought back then. They yeah. interpret it the way they want. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, people he's known for years turn on him. Well, yeah. like Instantly. The, <laughs> yeah, his cousin and... His the, girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, are like throwing shit at him and yeah. kicking him out of the town. They're and, about to like crucify him. Yeah, like we'll like, burn him. Yeah. You know, this time around, and I don't know like uh, how you guys process the movie, but that's what, I guess what I'm curious about. This time around when I'm watching and I'm like, you're introduced to this guy at Madison Square Garden and he has that brow and he looks sinister and he goes down in a parking lot and granted, it seems like the other guy starts to fight, but he fucking murders that guy, mm-hmm. cuts his goddamn head off with a fucking katana mm-hmm. and then he runs out and he's accosted by the police and he seems to be kind of resisting arrest and he's just an asshole to him and a smart ass, right? Mm-hmm. And he's taken away and we're like, is this is a good guy or a bad guy, but mm-hmm. I noticed like these... uh flashbacks as they give uh, them to us make you feel empathy for his character right like him Mm -hmm. getting thrown out of the the village i was like oh that kind of sucks like you know i mean yeah (laughs) because he's a good guy but then he meets heather oh yeah the love of his life his blossom yep and uh we all know that that of course is going to go horribly wrong because horribly very always does Right, when we cut to him four years later, it's, you're right, it's very ideal, like the birds are chirping, he's got his little castle in the in the oh, highlands. And the and all, so yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's That's goats lovely. running around, they're in love. It's really Sean nice. Sean Connery like, gives <laughs> him all this... Uh, I, yeah, but I uh, I thought that somebody was going to kill her. I thought that Oh, I thought so too. Yeah, I, as soon sure. as I saw him, I'm like, oh, he loves her, she's yeah. going to die. I thought for sure Clancy Brown was going to kill her. Yeah. But he doesn't, that's what kind of surprised me, but then what they do, it's like almost worse, because yes. we get that Queen song, did we say that Queen did the music Oh, Queen movie? did the music Hell for yeah, this movie, awesome. music. and it's amazing. Yeah. They've only done two, right? They Flash did, Gordon in this. Uh, we think, right? We, as far as we know. Okay. So we can't ever put Shit, we can't wall? put Queen on the wall. Yeah. Damn. God damn it, we'll find something. That's all they did? We'll find something, I'm sure they did. <laughs> well, Brian May, did, uh, didn't he do Freddy's Dead? So can we did he? I think, I so. think so. Guess yeah. we'll just have to do Bohemian <laughs> Rhapsody. <laughs> um, so we can do Wayne's World. That counts, right? Yeah, sure. World. Just, just for World. that. Yes, it's an iconic scene, right? <laughs> well, when you're uh, an immortal, you get to experience all this because uh, he doesn't know that he's an immortal, and and uh, Juan Ramirez has to tell him all this stuff, and the way that he does it is through these amusing kind of uh, scenarios where, like, he drowns him. Yeah, he throws yeah. him in the water, and and yeah, he ends up he ends up laughing underwater, which is funny. <laughs> but he finds out he he tells me he can't die, and so he's just sword fighting underwater. Yep. Which is what a great technique to learn. What a good workout, right? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like it's like it's workout. like uh, throwing weighted stuff, so you can you know throw something lighter faster. It's just like working up those muscles. I know he should mm-hmm. like they should have underwater training fights, and who knows if they did? I'll bet somebody we does. don't actually see it, but um, Juan Sanchez Villalobos. Ramirez. Okay, there you mm, go. There All right, is. I was one one name off. You were one name off um, from Egypt. <laughs> but this also kind of adds to the cool factor of this character. I remember, I think you know, the first time I saw it, like you know, and then he's underwater, and like you know, you're like, that's fucking awesome. Like mm-hmm. th- this life is like pretty cool. It's better than being a vampire, right? Like, oh yeah, yep. suck blood every night. Yeah. This one, <laughs> yeah, you just have to worry about getting your head cut off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, as long as this other guy doesn't kill me. But it's better than you know all these people out trying to. You know, put a stake through your heart. Yes. Um, 
Heather grows old and dies. She does. And Very sad. Some of the worst old age makeup I've ever seen in a movie. She didn't look too old. For the 80s, it wasn't that bad. Well, it's, let's put it this way. Big it's man it's, it's oh, better than true. how Billy Crystal looked in... Mr. Saturday Night, was it? In, no, Princess in, Bride. in Princess Bride. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so there can be bad old age makeup. That's true. Um, Though that was done on purpose. Yeah. There is this... Um, not all of the Highland, uh, not all, I would see I almost did it. Not all the Highlanders, not all the immortals <laughs> seem to be like antagonistic of each other. No, they're they're all good um, until you know they're all on the same side. They know the gathering is coming, but until mm. then, they don't feel like most of them don't feel like they need to fight each other. Yeah, a lot they of them and, seem really friendly. Yeah, they try and be on the same side. They know it's eventually going to have to come down to one, but... So, before. yeah, why not get the drop on them early when they're not suspecting it? What, what is all the civility among oh, them? Oh, damn. You know, like, so, Michaela's a savage, <laughs> apparently. I'm just saying, like... We don't have to fight for anything, do we? <laughs> like, I don't... Uh, suddenly, <laughs> suddenly I know who to look out for? I'm just saying, if, you, if you're permanently living in a purge state... <laughs> Like, what are you waiting for? Well, you know I, but saying? it's only a purge I, state between like the like four people. Okay, I guess maybe it's more like John Wick Part Two, right? Like every assassin sure. in the world after him in that movie. I imagine a lot of he's it not to, sitting around doing nothing. I imagine a lot of it has to do with the fact that like there's others like him and they can like kind of support each other. Like no one else is living two, three thousand years. Right. Well, yeah, who else do you have to talk you to? You know, like they can relate. They understand. It's like the plague, right? Horrible. Yeah. Right? Like they can have those conversations <laughs> it's and everything. Like they have, it's like their only confidant. <laughs> right, exactly. So. He has a wife. Like he, I'll it's not they, like he lives a loner, like hermit lifestyle. He has a pretty normal standard life. I know, but like later on. Yeah, but after like, she dies and he and goes on. Like, who knows? Yeah. Maybe they did fight each other at one point and then talked it out somehow they had just, to find out that they were yeah why didn't they kill each other my uh there just doesn't it, seem to be a lot of urgency to this curse is what i'm saying it seems like you can live most of your life being pretty okay my urge my, or my 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 read on it seems to be that the all it's of like them, loopers they're all aware that the kurgan is out there and i think that's yeah. the reason that they're not killing each other i think they mm -hmm. would if it wasn't for him i think okay. they know that like if this guy wins is a bad deal so we kind of have to See? have an yeah. alliance to weed out everybody to try and mm -hmm. get to him. They yeah. should have had a scene where it was a bunch of them getting together and having that conversation. Like, mm. we're going to unite in our common goal of stopping Kurgan. Right. Where was that scene? Not in the movie. Yeah. Right. yeah not. Yeah. And we didn't flash back to that. Yeah. We it would have been but cool maybe to sequel. see all different types of immortals. Like, it would have been like that scene at the end of Twilight, mm -hmm. where you see the vampires from all over the world. It's it would have been, yeah, it would have been. <laughs> they, Colin, they literally all come together and have that exact conversation about stopping a common enemy. They do. So, yeah. Which one played it better? We had to I mean, have we actually saw that I was like, we had, we had that scene. Yeah, we had that scene. Yeah, they have a leg up, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, um, we don't know so much about, like, so we know that. Connor McLeod was married and his wife died and it shattered him, right? Yes. Um, he burned everything and left. Yeah. Because that's the, you know, he gave up that life. I yeah, mean, that was done. kind of the, you know, Luke Skywalker thing where you have to, you're not actually who you are until you burn your past and, and right. go forward. Um, so will he ever love again? There is a Probably. woman he in, doesn't want to. that he has as the, um, uh, manager of his store. I don't know, like the, yeah. She's like his, permanent assistant well i want to say i don't want to say secretary because she's obviously more important than that um but his companion over the years his surrogate daughter as it were mm -hmm. yeah he i get sir in world war ii yeah. yeah yeah this scene is missing from the american theatrical release oh that, world yeah. war I mean. uh sorry we watched what is called now the director's cut Yes. But it's actually, this is the one that's widely available, but this is actually the uh, international release version of the movie. I don't I don't know where you can find the actual American uh, version of this. Yeah? Uh, that one anymore. harder to find? Yeah. I think it was just like, once DVD came around, it was all international cut, mm. which adds several scenes that weren't there when I first saw it, including the World War II flashback, a lot of uh, backflipping in the, in the garage. <laughs> and a lot of backflipping. <laughs> several seconds <laughs> on a rain. sex scene. Talented, yeah. talented. Talented man. Yep, yep, yep. A cannon logo at the beginning. The cannon, cannon logo. logo. Yes. Is, is, uh, that was a surprise. The summer of cannon goes on. Yeah. <laughs> cannon. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, because I swear to God, the one I saw had the 20th Century Fox logo on it back in, in the day. Um, 
So, yeah, I mean, that's, I guess, how I take it. It's like Rachel is his daughter. He's just uh, a lot younger looking than her. Mm -hmm. But he's raised her since 1944 or something Mm -hmm. like that. But he may be falling in love with a forensic scientist at the New York Police Department. Mm -hmm. That's Brenda Wyatt, who's all excited about uh, swords, antique swords. Yep. Oh, yeah. There's also things that this movie does that I appreciate. Um, and I don't know, like if he, like the little asides that different characters seem to have um, all through the movie where it's just kind of like little bits of business or like, you know, that the hot dog salesman, you know, like what does incompetent mean? Yes. You know, like all these little <laughs> <laughs> like that little moment right there. I liked very much. There's a lot of that in this movie. Um, I want to mention one thing about the Brenda character. Um, did you happen to notice the earrings she wears throughout the movie? Mm-hmm. It's all like swords and stuff. And even one of them was like, it was like a dagger that was half metal, half red. Like it was a dagger that was like dipped in blood and shit. Nice. Like even for that character, that stuff kept going. Nice. So that was pretty cool. She's always trying to figure out like, uh, am I in love with this guy or afraid of him? Is he a killer or what? Right. Because they are looking for someone who is going around town beheading people at this point. This is the police procedural part of this movie, which I didn't know. Thinking about Highlander, I thought there was a lot of Scottish in this movie, and I didn't know of the uh, contemporary parts of it. Really? I didn't. No. Yeah. That's... I have no idea. Okay. All right. Well... Again, I uh, <laughs> seeing this, and I'm like, I've never seen this movie. <laughs> well, that's... that's yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess that's interesting, that that's the way the perception of it is, like, out there. I mean... The poster is literally just him in his Highland garb standing. Yeah, in yeah. Sky. Like, There's no indication of the other half of this movie on mm-hmm. the poster. No, I had no idea, and I don't know. Yeah, I had no idea. Mm-hmm. Well, once we get to New York City, mm-hmm. there's. Uh, well, I suppose he's been in New York City for a while. She's investigating who he is. Yes, he's uh, an antique dealer, apparently, and there which might- makes sense. Right, and this is where he has that awesome, like, sunken floor uh, antique room or whatever. Yep. See, this is where you should have, he should the antiques he has should be, especially in this room, uh, things from throughout history, like... Um, I think they were, we they, just didn't get yeah, a good look. Right, well, that's what I'm saying, like, in a more contemporary movie, we would get good looks at them and, like, recognize, recognize shit. Recognize them? Right, yeah. like, you have the crate from Indiana Jones, that's like a Predator wild two. example. Like but, the end of Predator yeah. 2, when we yeah, see all the like weapons from or all the he's got, Demeros, like, yeah. a, a vial of Christ's blood that he has, because he, you know... Is that too on the nose, or is that, like, how the... Well, it depends on uh, how you feel about the other scenes in the movie that don't necessarily have to do with his journey as a Highlander, but with him being immortal. Because we get a couple of those scenes in Britain. Are we in uh, Great Britain, England at one point where he's he's oh, offended? He's the, 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 oh, in Boston like, oh. Common. Oh, yeah, well, yeah, 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 yeah. He's, he's, yeah. Uh, he's offended one of the Redcoats, and so he's getting into sword duels and everything. I mean, uh, how that great, scene he... <laughs> felt really out of place, though. Like it was <laughs> just that, and we never talked about it or touched on it ever. Well, see, again. that's like, that's the stuff that's uh, yeah, that's weird. Because I think there's another scene. I forgot what it was, though. I felt like there was another one. But stuff like that is popped into the movie, which is interesting because I love they do this with Wolverine in one of the movies as well. When their an immortal goes through history and how they're experiencing. They did it in the credits of a Wolverine movie. They did it throughout a Wolverine movie. Like the beginning credits you're talking about? The intro credits to X-Men Origins Wolverine was like a montage of him through time. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. The movie was not that. Just the credits. for No, it was. Mm -hmm. The credits. Mm -hmm. You're right. Yes. Mm -hmm. That would have been a much better movie had they actually just done that. Sure. <laughs> what was your original question? Uh, <laughs> uh, now I don't even. We're, I think yeah. we're talking about. Uh, we're talking about the artifacts in the. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No, but those scenes are kind of cool. I guess just that one was a kind of a. I like them as comedic, flavor. Yes. Yeah. I mean, just to give because they're funny. This movie's a lot funnier than I remember it being. It is. Uh, it's got a lot of. Well, I mean, it, I, it's not like. Straight up comedy. No, it's not blatantly. No. It's just uh, offhand humor, considering their situations, which yeah. I found pretty funny. The Kurgan, at some point after he kills Castigear, one of the immortals in mm. an alley, um, is seen by everybody. Takes an old lady on a horrifying joyride through New York, and nice. then 
he's like uh, in order because all the the police sketch artists are you know have uh, you know he's on the front of the New York Post so he goes in disguise by shaving his head yeah. that's it and putting safety pins in in a, <laughs> a wound in his neck that he got by Ramirez in the in the past oh that's yeah because he gets his throat cut and almost beheaded but <laughs> now he's just safety pinned it together maybe a turtleneck but okay <laughs> no that's not this guy's style I know no, that no leather we're jacket talking leather or, jackets yes, yeah. chain mail <laughs> stuff hanging off of him big piercings boots. big boots mm-hmm. long black the, hair until he shaves his head well, right. he'd be very frightening in a church I guess he'd be very it, frightening <laughs> anywhere, anywhere. <laughs> he'd be very frightening at a biker bar have you guys seen what Nick Cage's oldest son looks like? That's what, uh-huh. that's what he looks like. That oh, is what, oh, that is show what you right okay. now. Yeah. So you can get the Weston Cage, I think is his name. Oh, wow. I have not uh, kept track of Nick Cage's uh, kids. How well, many does he have? I don't well, know. you'll see I why I know about people... Kal-El. kal yeah. Cage. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Damn. You'll, you'll see why people talk about Weston Cage Indeed. in a minute here. Uh, I like this uh, this part where he's fighting... Um, the Kurgan is fighting. What's his name? Castigier. Castigier. Yeah. Castigier in the in the alleyway because of the guy who shows up. Um, we're introduced to a guy in a Trans Am just driving around town. He's got a stockpile of that's, weapons. That's Weston Cage. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah that makes yeah. sense. Yeah, he's got a stockpile of weapons in his oh. car. <laughs> he looks like Marilyn Manson or uh, Nathan Danzig Explosion or... from uh, <laughs> yeah. Metalocalypse. Yeah. Yeah, basically. Um, but he's driving around like he's being a vigil- <laughs> vigilante yeah, 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 going around yeah. looking for crime to stop. And he drives by an alley and sees a sword fight going on. He's like, what the hell? And he ends up, uh, I mean, uh, Castiger gets beheaded. So there's another one of the immortals gone. Um, this guy tries to take him out with a Mac 10. Uh, it doesn't go well for him. Um, and yeah, that's when he makes the whole, all the buildings explode. This part of was, I thought was great as well. The, the like qu- the quickening. That's, that the, quickening, that's the quickening. Yeah, yeah, the quickening of that part where everything blows up and all that stuff. That was a fucking cool scene. Yeah. Like, that was fun. Mm-hmm. And the guy gets impaled with a sword, but he lives. Yeah. Yeah, because the same thing happens at the beginning at the in in the car the garage after he after yes. Christopher Lambert beheads the other guy. Yes. Everything around him like starts exploding. Yeah, because there's a lot of um like 80s animation, I guess, in it. That yes. Electrical yes. stuff. Yeah, the blue electrical lines and everything. Especially and at the end, there's like demons and stuff floating around. This oh, yeah. is when he wins yep. the prize and yeah. kills the Kurgan. During that's the big... fight he was talking about, too. Like when Sean Connery is telling him, I think, earlier in the movie. But yeah, the, the animation of it with giant demons fighting each other, biting each other, going through uh, him at the end of it. It's very mm-hmm. cool. It's very, very 80s. Very, very 80s. music video. Very, yeah. So, what if I told you oh. mm. there was a movie called Highlander 2 The Quickening, which mm. okay. Russell Mulcahy directed, sure. and Christopher Lambert and Sean Connery are both in. Mm. Okay. And what How if different I, is it from this movie? What if I told you the Michael Ironside's in it? Oh, even okay. better. Oh. And it starts off on the planet Zeist. Okay. I'm, li- I'm listening. All right. <laughs> Where all of these immortals are at war with each other, and they come from the planet Zeiss down to Earth, but they come to Earth in the future where Connor McCloud, the smartest man on- alive, has saved the planet from evil sun rays by building a gigantic shield around the planet. Why did we so not watch this one? It's always nighttime, and it's Blade Runner. Okay? Virginia Madsen's also in this movie. <laughs> and somehow... Whenever Connor McCloud needs Ramirez, he just says, Ramirez, I need you. And Ramirez pops back up. As a force ghost? Like a force, yeah. No, no, he's actually there. Why? <laughs> the two of them take on evil Michael Ironside. In oh my God, so it sounds bad. amazing. So this so this movie never happened? Is that yeah. what we're... Basically, so yeah. no one ever really dies? Well, no, they're retconning it to say that like they're aliens from space and this is a whole thing that's been going on for... Yeah. Wow. This is generally regarded as one of the worst movies ever made. Oh, my God. Uh, I'm bringing and I saw it. it in the theater because I was like, Highlander 2, what? I got to see it. And then you sit down and you're like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> wow. Well, Sean's definitely going to bring yep. it. Now, so. Sean's absolutely bringing this. So apparently, Russell Mulcahy, so despondent oh. over... This the movie the way that it turns out tries to become Alan Smithy and take his name uh, off, but uh, he's not part of the union, so he can't. So he's still credited as the director mm-hmm. of the movie. Wow! But years later, thank God, he's able to cut together Highlander to the Quickening, the Renegade Edition. Oh <laughs> no. man! Where he tries to fix it. <laughs> wow! So there's two versions of Highlander to the Quickening out there. 
But then, yeah, then they ended up doing a third one, which is the one with Mario Van Peebles, which ignores the continuity of Highlander 2. <laughs> like, that's okay. right. everybody just forgets <laughs> that one uh, ever existed. Yeah, that's probably the more freak show uh, wow. pick. <laughs> I'm watching too, a trailer after it's this like, is over. <laughs> yeah, you have to set it up with Highlander 1. Uh, yeah, I think so. Like, there's certain sequels you can go to, but this feels like we needed this before we got to that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But getting to that, it's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think, yeah, at some point we're going to actually have to do that. But it's like the craziest, uh, craziest convoluted thing in order to make this whole like uh, series uh, in multiple, you know, uh, media yeah. thing happen around uh, Highlander. Um, it feels like I'm forgetting like a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, there's so much. I think there's uh, so much in this we can't mention at all. They have that sword fight on the silver cup sign, they which do. we point out was in Malignant. Mm-hmm. It was they a key do. part of Malignant, so mm-hmm. that's cool. Yeah, where I think they had to have built a silver cup sign, they, on right? Stu- on they a stage or something yeah. so they can destroy it. But yeah. again, this points again to the budget of this mm-hmm. is like pretty- right. What is the budget of this? It seems outstanding. I'm gonna guess thirty million. I have no idea. Oh my god! Uh, Look at him in 1980s money. Oh, yeah, I'm gonna guess be, 30 million. What it seems to be surprise your, right. you to know that it bombed at the box office. Not a single goddamn person went to see it. How? I remember, and I don't know if you guys remember this. In the days of VHS tapes mm. and their mom and pop video stores. Yes. This Love one it. had a tag on it that I don't remember ever seeing before, and it was Sleeper. Oh, I've uh, seen Sleeper on a few things before. Okay, explain really? for the kids at home what's a Sleeper movie. Well, it's like a Sleeper hit movie. It's just like uh, you may have, uh, you may not have heard of it, or maybe you have. Um, uh, it has like a cult following, right? It's like maybe you haven't heard of it, but it's good. Yeah. Like, so I'm like, was that the editorial decision by the staff at the video store? Maybe going, like, this one's actually good, even though yeah. you have. I would heard trust of it. them more. To be like, hey, we've watched it. This one's a sleeper. It's like book recommendations in Barnes and Noble these days. It's just yeah. like, we recommend this. Budget was Crazy. $19 million. Feels, I mean, 1980. Oh, I mean, they, I feel like you see all of it's it. It's on yeah. screen. Like, well, it's. Box office like, was 12.8. Damn. That's yeah, disappointing. It did not do well. Nope. But I mean, I suppose part of that is because nobody knew who Christopher. I mean, well, I guess they did. They knew he won the Oscar for uh, Greystoke. Didn't he? This, or nominated? This man has a fucking Oscar. This guy has an he Oscar. Was, he, I, he may have been nominated. I'll take the nominated for yeah for Tarzan because tar, that Tarzan All movie right. was like you know it was from the director of Chariots of Fire. Oh, <laughs> so it was yeah. a Tarzan. I movie. just yeah. Yeah. after what I've seen of his acting, I can't imagine this man giving an Oscar worthy performance right. of anything. But so he is also a monosyllabic Tarzan, he, which he may be stares. perfect for it. Yeah, he just it stares. Be, he yeah. might be. It might be. Has, it, it's the it's the thing of like he's maybe not a great actor, but if you find the right role yeah, for yeah. anybody yeah, they can true. fly and maybe just, that was it he has one facial expression one look and it's, it's just it's a very, very blank yeah and very just yeah, yeah. mouth I, a little agape yep mm-hmm. they say he has myopia or something that was why he got the role in tarzan because when he took his glasses off he looked like he was staring into space yeah yeah i mean yeah he does. The that's his only from. look that's the problem <laughs> yeah wow before he had his crowning achievement of mean guns yeah i mean definitely with so. iced tea Terrible, terrible. Uh, but they they get uh, where do we get to? They get uh, after the silver cup sign and everything. They get they end up fighting in a music video at the very yep. end of this um, on a vacated floor with just really nice backlit square windows. Mm-hmm. Um, it looked like Kill Bill. I thought it looked like the end of Fight Club when they pulled. The yeah, kind of that okay. one in the building. Yeah, yeah. that that darkness and and mm-hmm. yeah and the lighting in there. Yeah, all the windows blow out. Yeah, well, and they fight it out, and uh, the Kurgan. Yeah. His throat slashed again. I guess he gets beheaded, but it, uh, does he get fully beheaded? It looks like he gets his throat slashed and it kind of falls back. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted a head. He gets his head cut off, but it, he doesn't know that it's cut off. So yeah. the body yeah. keeps moving around afterwards yeah. and he laughs and his head tilts back and, and whoosh, you know, all that and, shit and, and yep. fucking 80s light starts coming out of it and everything. Mm-hmm. And then uh, he dies and then he's gets all wrapped up and the animated demons and ghosts and stuff come in and start fighting and the quickening is happening because he is now the one and he falls what the would floor. you do with all that power if you had it go on a picnic in scotland <laughs> yeah <laughs> there you go is it with underwhelming the love is it under after everything that like went before it is it underwhelming to find out what the prize actually was uh i mean I wasn't really like thinking about what the prize was. I wasn't. Yes, yes. Yeah. there you go. Yeah, I agree. I'm just like it, was, it wasn't my concern. Yeah. yeah, like those two and the Kur- the Kurgan yeah. and him right there at the end. So and then he reveals that like oh it's he's 
all he's got like the all knowing power of yeah. the universe. And it's like okay, well that that makes sense. I'm like, that's okay. <laughs> Uh, I admit to being a little bit disappointed when it actually finally happened <laughs> in the original time. You know, I was time more I was disappointed like, that he left his daughter in New York City and went to Scotland with his new girlfriend. Yeah. That pissed me. I don't care if she's 68 years old. That's still your daughter. But how many times has he done that in his life? Probably a lot. Right? He's probably a real deadbeat dad across generations. Child. Yeah. Here's liked... here's ri- riches galore, but I'm leaving you. Right, and especially because I liked their relationship. Me too. Like Why I liked it when her? he make he makes the magic joke twice, and I'm just like, yeah. oh, oh god! Like I felt it when he's going <laughs> down the know. elevator and everything. I'm just like, and she's like got liked... tears in her eyes. Yeah. And I'm like, Jesus, that's uh, fucked up. Why didn't she go to Scotland with them? I know because she says, you know, you don't let everybody anybody ever love you, and blah blah blah. She knows this because she's true. seen it like yeah. her, her entire life. Yeah. I don't know. So it's a lonely existence. He Bullshit. says he's not lonely, but it's he's not, not depressed. Though, he always has it doesn't a partner. Have to it doesn't yeah. have to he be. always has a partner. It's not that lonely for no. him. He's, he's not living like a hermit. He's living he's a pretty good life. more than I have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and he owns an antique thing. Yeah, like, yeah. Yep. yeah he's, he can go down and sharpen his sword like every yeah, night that's that he wants true, to. That's yeah. very true. Yeah. That's he's literally got everything he could want. I would argue the Kurgan has a much lonelier existence. Absolutely. Because he's but, living in a flea bag motel. Like but he, a flop house, but yeah. he, yeah, he is, yeah. But he likes it, I have a feeling, just mm-hmm. based on. This, he, he's great in the church scene, too. When he's mm-hmm. t- talking to the nuns and everything, he. When he walks in and he <laughs> snuffs out all the candles that people have lit. Yes, that I was the funny. pettiness. Great, of it, yeah. the, great, the pettiness of it, the great. <laughs> it's great character work. God damn it, Clancy Brown. Was he Ooh, quoting. Was that. Is it oh yeah, Def Leppard, or it's better to burn out, out than, than fade, fade away. away. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, a, a lot of the people are good in this, but we should probably, I guess, tell folks whether or not they should watch Highlander uh, based on our recommendation, or will we not recommend mm-hmm. that you watch it? Only one way to find out, Colin. Yep, that's right. Because there can be to... only one way. They're... And you have, and that's <laughs> listening to the rest of the How show. How many times are we going to hear that in the mailbag? <laughs> oh, man. oh no! It's, it's going to be Chuck Norris so jokes all over again, and, and oh. Ben Affleck. You were the bomb and phantoms all over. Again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to have to stay tuned and find out. Uh, first of all, we're going to read some of your mail, and to do that, we're going to need to summon mail uh, mailman Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. We should uh, record a couple of those for me in case I die. So I don't know if he's still going to come if somebody else claps. You know what I mean? So I used to clap when you weren't here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And during during the dark COVID years, I may have been doing some clapping. Oh, that's very true. You were telling people stuff behind. There is definitely only one Igor. Oh. <laughs> oh yes that's right even he, if he is made up of many there is he, only one he killed all the other ones mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yes, whatever because the other ones the prize, are and that's bringing us mail I think he just, yeah, and, and like the movie he absorbed them yeah <laughs> yeah yes he did <laughs> do they absorb all their knowledge when they kill them i think so okay i think yeah. he just happens? absorbs them physically the, that's just why their, he, i think it's like their their the yeah, other life yeah. force okay and get stronger all right mm-hmm. uh but we should let people know how they can uh, participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on facebook facebook.com slash at freak show or twitter at sat freak show they can email us at freak show at yahoo.com or you can follow along on instagram at saturday night freak show about tonight's movie highlander the highlander or highlander Highlander. Highlander is the grocery Highlander. store. Highlander is the yeah. You movie. Just said okay. the same thing. No, Highlander. 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 Is, yeah. Okay. It's like it's Point Break. It's Point Break and Point Break. Okay. <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> I've well, gone through years of this abuse. I miss that grocery store. <laughs> I know. Me too. <laughs> well, Joey <laughs> Blythe writes. They should have redone it and had him like yeah. holding the sword <laughs> right. up above instead I of know, the right? fucking. I mean, it's Scottish. They spell the there word is a Scottish H-I-L-A-N-D. guy. I L A N. Oh yeah, but that. isn't it still a Scottish guy that was their mascot? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. yeah. Who was right in the spelling? Them in the movie. Um, Mm -hmm. Joey Blythe uh, says, uh, Confession, I haven't seen the original movie yet. I started in Mm. 1991 when I was 10 with Highlander 2, and then I watched the animated series and the TV series, mostly because I like Queen's Princes of the Universe theme. It's a great Mm. theme. But I just found Highlander on Tubi, so guess what I'm about to watch? Go for it. Nice. Uh, Travis Legler says, There can be only one. Naturally. Says mm-hmm. the movie with six sequels. I have to be honest. <laughs> this is a franchi- 
franchise I know by name and catchphrase only. However, yep. like the Phantasm movies after the Freak Show reviews, that there's a high probability that I will start watching them. Make sure to do some Sean Connery impressions while you're at it. Oh, no. Oh, I didn't bust out Sean Connery during this no, time. No, I'm not going to do it. Man. It seems like it'd be natural. He was just so barely in the movie. That's yeah. why. That's very true. And he doesn't win. really have any, uh, I don't know if he says any good words. Yeah. That there, you can. There can be only one. There can be only one. There, there you go. <laughs> Push it. Push it uh, <laughs> Michael Whitaker says, there can be only one, except this franchise also ventured into television with a completely separate character, so apparently there can be at least two. Highlander <laughs> was probably one of the bigger movie franchises I was actually pretty oblivious to, save for the joke in Mystery Science Theater 3000 about the quickening ruining Sean Connery's career for a bit, mm. and to this day I'm only aware of the joke's about the movies. That's what I'm saying. That's everybody's awareness. I feel yeah, like this nowadays. is everybody's yeah, awareness yeah, yeah. of yeah. the Highlander movies now. This is 86. 87 was Untouchables. And okay. he won an Oscar. He did. So, oh. didn't, didn't, so, he, so he came back pretty quick. Yeah, he came right. back pretty quick. He did and then, right, yeah. But then he did Highlander 2 in 1991. <laughs> yeah. so. you, you forget. Maybe <laughs> yeah. he was like, just uh. having a lot of fun. I think yeah. it, the, what I heard was he and Christopher Lambert got along like a house on fire. <laughs> and he was like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. Because, you know, he's in it. Oh, right? that's great. Like hanging out with him. Good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, G Money says there can be only one with three sequels in a TV yep. series. We're all kind of uh, iffy on. We got six sequels, three sequels, five sequels, and we've determined an that there series. are five, six movies. How is there an animated series about this? And a Japanese anime. Yeah, so that, that, that seems more <laughs> in line with this, yes. Uh, B Movie Vault says, I'm glad you're watching this as it means you'll eventually have to watch Highlander <laughs> 2. What the screaming blue hell is going on? <laughs> I've always loved the original, but once they started getting into aliens and tombed illusionists and sequels based on the TV show, I realized there should have only been one. <laughs> there we go. Yeah. Okay, now that's if, the joke right there. That, that, no, that is one. that's yeah, the joke. Yeah, so I don't it. care if anybody else says it in this mail. You skip it yeah. because it's done. That's the joke. That's the one. Yes. That's it. Yep. Good job. We found it. Uh, Robin Silverberg says, "There's here's another movie where Sean Connery plays a fill in the blank with appropriate nationality here without bothering to change his Scottish <laughs> accent." <laughs> oh, right. Yep. Yeah, correct. Uh. I'm like, awesome. did he even try a Russian accent in the Hunt for Red October? I, I don't I, think so. I don't think I've ever heard him up. do anything other than his own I accent. Probably said ever. He does say. speak in Russian in the Hunt for does Red he? October, mm. right before they do that translation y thing. Or all of a sudden they're talking English. They it zooms in on his mouth. Okay. Oh. Uh, Simon Carter says the casting may be batshit crazy, but God damn, is this an awesome movie? Clancy Brown absolutely rocked it. Mm -hmm. And the, it's a movie that I quote to this day. Yeah. Adam Kaler says Highlander created haunted parking garages with immortal headless mm. corpses since 1986. I wonder if they validate parking. <laughs> I think you need your head for that. What what started the like parking garages are an unsafe space trope in movies? You know, Highlander. No, I it, no like idea. that's because we still use that. If we need yeah. to get a character alone where they're vulnerable, have them walk through a parking garage. Because nobody hangs around in a parking garage. Not so it's for a very any lonely, good reason. Right, yeah, for it's dark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and it's usually dark and not well lit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, Peter Gatt says, the Ladies' Guide to Dude Cinema podcast just covered this, so I'm going to order a pizza and we'll re-watch it tonight. Nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the Ladies' Guide to Dude Cinema. Okay. Uh, 91 21 premieres says, it's a banger of a movie and a killer soundtrack. And John McDowell says, this is going to be as epic. I hope so. I yeah. mean, Yes. <laughs> Yeah, the soundtrack was awesome. Uh, yeah, it was. It's on the Queen album. I think it's it's a kind of magic, a kind of magic. It's a kind of magic. I think that's the name of the album. Oh, that's great. But that's actually that's the, the line. Highlander. I was like, that's the line yeah. in the movie. Yeah. That, makes sense. The, yeah. that was great. the song at the end. Yeah. Uh, and Michael Kamen did the musical score. Michael Kamen also did Die Hard, Lethal Weapon. Mm. A lot the of score those. was good too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Robin Hood, Prince. Yeah. Kings. Um, Michael, or sorry about uh, Cyborg, mm -hmm. uh, last <laughs> week's movie. Uh, uh, Michael Whitaker says, post-apocalyptic New Jersey is just like regular New Jersey, and I should know I'm originally from New Jersey. There you oh, go. Like so you're allowed to say it. <laughs> yeah. So you're allowed to say it. I think we were saying that Cyborg 
took place in New Jersey, but it did actually start in New York City, and then I think it did. It it did and they, yeah, but we saw them go through Hobo- Hoboken because yes. there was a sign for it. So yes. you know, on the way to, to Atlanta. Atlanta. <laughs> yes, <laughs> confirmed. <laughs> Carson Snar said the image that we posted uh, this week from it. Uh, it was the cyborg with her eye. Mm, being yeah, kinda, looks like a weird album cover. It did. Uh-huh. Uh, Stephen Helicopter thinks that the cyborg looks like Blanche from the Golden Girls. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, in our post for the episode, we said that uh, that Cyborg was sounded the death knell for uh, Canon Films and Kryptonian Orphan. Right, and says I was today years old when I discovered the meaning of the word knell. For the love of Michaela, oh. I always heard in my head the word nail. I've always considered myself with above average intelligence, don't we all? But the Saturday Night Freak Show has tutored me once again. <laughs> Thanks. There you go. Wonderful. Nice. There you go. Right. Don't say we never taught you anything. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> That's what we're here for, so you can learn. Useless information. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm, 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 yeah, it's, it's not going to be good, <laughs> yeah. but you're going to learn not it. Not stuff you can use in your everyday life. Yeah. No. Like, hey, at least now. Hey, we all know not this. true. I won <laughs> tickets on a radio the other day. It is useful. <laughs> you can get things from it. <laughs> there you oh, go. Speaking of useless, useful, uh, there's a T-Mobile. Well, don't point at me when you do that. <laughs> there's, a, there's a T-Mobile commercial with Ben Barnes in it, oh. and it came on for a second while I was walking through the living room, and I looked at it and said, why is that guy from Westworld and, and Chronicles of Narnia in a T-Mobile commercial? And my husband looked at me and he was like, I don't know what you're talking about. He, he was convinced that that was just some generic white dude. I'm like, no, that's Ben Barnes. <laughs> and so then I went. So then I, I googled Ben Barnes, and the autofill was T-Mobile commercial. And I was like, "See?" And I was like, "Too bad I can't monetize this talent in any way." <laughs> now I have a question: Who is Ben Barnes? He's Prince Caspian in the Chronicles yeah. of Narnia. Uh, His face is on a few posters. Gotcha. But in yeah. Westworld, he's um, Jimmy Simpson's shithead friend that tries mm. to talk him yeah. into all the bad stuff. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Gotcha. You've right. seen him in a million things. He's just very sure. forgettable. Yeah. Sure. I've seen Westworld. So and apparently T-Mobile thinks he's worth investing in and is a good uh, spokesperson. So. Okie doke. Yeah. Uh, well, now we're going to go around the table and tell you whether or not you should watch Highlander, starting with Sean. <laughs> so, this is a great movie, in my opinion. This is my first time seeing it tonight. I had no idea about uh, Clancy Brown. I had no idea about the... I probably had some idea about the Queen soundtrack, but not... Really, I'm sure it was mentioned with Flash Gordon, this being the other one that they did. Um, I think the direction is great. The cinematography is great. I love the transitions in this. I love the style of this. Um, I think uh, the director used all his talents from his work over the years on music videos um, to top-notch effect in this. Um, I was thoroughly engaged throughout um it's a fun movie i'm surprised how much i liked as much the scottish stuff as well as the modern day new york police procedural um christopher lambert and sean connery do seem to be having fun in this movie that comes across uh christopher christopher lambert being the actor he is um whatever you have to say about that it works well enough in this movie uh i'm gonna mention clancy brown again because he's fucking badass Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um i i i I think this movie's great i'm i'm some I'm disappointed that it took me this long to watch it finally. And I think if you haven't seen it, I think you should watch it um, because it is very entertaining. Uh, Yeah, I recommend the hell out of Highlander. This is great. I'm surprised. (laughs) Michaela, what did you think about Highlander? Highlander. Um, Yeah, I'd seen it once before, but it was probably at least a decade ago, maybe more even. Um, Don't like Christopher Lambert. Don't (laughs) don't get it. Don't enjoy it. I think... I would really like to see this movie with literally anyone else in that oh, role. Oh, damn. Because it's so much time spent on someone that can't emote and doesn't and it doesn't have any dialogue to speak. So he's just mm-hmm. staring and stumbling around this movie. When and- we were watching this, I mentioned that if they were to remake it now, I think it'd be Tom Hardy. Who, yeah. Who would you... I, that's a, yeah, I'd yeah, be down for. But I'd be down for like literally anyone that can <laughs> just like they can just emote. Do you have long hair yeah, and you know? can hold a broadsword? Yeah, you don't need You're long. You don't need long hair. Yes, yeah. grab that's some true. Game of Thrones person and put him in this. I don't care. Like it's just someone who does something other than just stare. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, but Sean Connery is awesome. Clancy Brown obviously is amazing. Is a standout, and I feel like he does so many good things, and yet so many people still forget about him, and that's a shame. Yeah. So. Uh, it's like your patriotic duty to appreciate Clancy Brown. I, I think I so. Feel like, um, yeah, the soundtrack is obviously so fucking cool. Like how how good of a movie do you have to be to get Queen to do your soundtrack? You know, right. like 
That's I wonder that's saying something. I, yeah, you know? I wonder at what point they were convinced to do it. Right. Like what they saw in it that was like, yeah, we'll do this. Right. If they and saw a movie, they saw her read a script. And mm-hmm. it's not just one song, it is multiple songs, and that's really awesome. Yeah. Um, I forgot about them until they showed up again. I was like, right. Oh yeah, Queen. Right. <laughs> um, I would say definitely check it out. I thought it was a little longer than it needed to be. It's definitely had a couple slowdowns and parts that didn't feel like it needed it, and it didn't define the rules enough well enough for me, but I still had a good time watching it. <laughs> And I think there's a lot of good stuff here, so I would recommend it. Holly? Um, yeah, so I saw this when I was a kid, um, but it had be, been a long time, and I was wondering if it was going to hold up. Um, but I think I think it does, surprisingly. <laughs> um, it was one of those movies I really didn't expect it to, to hold up as well as it does. Um, but I, I agree with, with Sean that I was noticing a lot of the camera work and the editing and I was like this is a really well made movie. It's I'm I'm very it was more well made than I yeah. thought it was going to be. I don't know why, but it is. No, it's it's a good looking movie for sure. Um I I agree with you Michaela. It's a bit long. I don't know the difference between this version and the other version. I don't know 16 minutes on this one. Yeah, it doesn't feel it feels like it's less than 10 minutes okay. that they cut mm-hmm. out of it. All right. Well, I think then just the movie in general probably could shave off a little bit because it did, it did feel a bit long, even though it did keep my attention most of the time. Like Michaela said, there are some parts that drag, um, so it could be shorter. Um, and Crystal, Christopher Lambert, I agree. He's not great. Um, he's a good looking dude. So I'm guessing that's why he's the main character. But I don't know. I didn't. Ha- I wasn't like offended by his performance, but I wasn't super stoked on it either. Um, but yeah, overall, I would recommend Highlander. I think it's I think it's a fun movie. It's a cool movie. Um, I'm actually really excited for the sequel whenever Sean brings it. <laughs> I think it's going to be ridiculous. I, I mean, it is. It's a free show. <laughs> yeah. 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 But at least now knowing this, you're going to be because that makes right. it even more. Like, oh, yeah. What the fuck? Yeah. Right. This it's going to make it better. This is going to be one of the sequels that we're all like, yes, finally. <laughs> um, but yeah, Highlander's a good time. You should watch it. Colin. Yeah, I mean, I brought it because it does feel like people know, you know, uh, it's in popular culture enough that they have some idea that it's out there. But it feels like now you're getting to the point where people haven't actually seen it or they've seen the sequels or they've seen the television show. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, I, I think a lot of people have probably come into it through the television show, you know, and so I don't. I, I don't share that experience, I guess, not having watched it. So I don't know what that angle is or what the, uh, you know, what they know about the mythology mm. that, you know. Um, but I always go back to this one because this one made a very uh, good impression on me when I saw it uh, in lo- lower quality video uh, format <laughs> and a shorter version. Um, the, yeah, the whole thing with Rachel, I think, is basically like trimmed completely. I mean, she's there, but you know that she works for him and she knows his secret. That's mm. basically it. Um, they probably could have left it at that. Yeah. Well, maybe. Yeah. Or just not have that character in it at all. But, yeah. Um, but they have such good moments. Yeah. I, but that's, I guess what I like uh, watching it tonight, because it has been a little while since I watched it. And so there was the question of like, does it hold up? Does it play? You know, here's a, there's an audience going to watch it and how are they going to react to it? And how does it play? And it's like, it still plays like a real movie. I mean, like, this is, oh, like, yeah. like, it's a great movie. You know, I mean, oh, this yeah. is like a stone cold classic of the 1980s, the high point of fantasy cinema, because now it feels like, I'm like, is now the high point of some fantasy cinema? But it seems like we're recycling a lot of the stuff yeah. that came up with, like, in the 80s, even though that was recycling, but whatever, <laughs> uh, codified in the 1980s. Um, it has these performances that are big. Uh, Clancy Brown, uh, Sean Connery, you know, like Sean Connery's just like effortlessly. He's one of those actors who can sell the dumbest lines. <laughs> and I'm not saying he has dumb lines in this movie, but I've seen other movies where like this is an underwritten part and he somehow still manages to make it human. And he does it in this where it's like th- this is a good performance based on, you know, I mean, it doesn't have a whole lot to do, but, you know, um, and I actually I mean, I guess I'll defend Christopher Lamb bear in this movie yeah not so much in some of the other things i've seen him in where i think he is like kind of a one note guy and you know he has he's not he doesn't have movie star charisma he he mm. usually plays like a boorish arrogant you know guy and a lot of that comes across in his russell nash 
right? Yes. But his Connor McCloud, it, it actually does have some kind of humorous moments. He's got a little bit of charm. You know, there's a little bit it's of pathos. A little more playful. Yeah. yeah. It, it's it, like he oh, also yeah he also hasn't gone through all the stuff. Right. This is very early. He on. hasn't become the jaded guy. Yeah. That he's he not numb like and jaded. Yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Oh. So you know, I'm like. Okay, in this movie, I like him. <laughs> and, you know, then he was in Mortal Kombat, and anybody could have played that. But, you know, sure. I mean, um, yeah, I think this is a, the, even from, you know, Sean was saying, I guess, you know, the, technologically, uh, this movie probably was ahead of its time. We have to kind of appreciate that as we go back. I think uh, Russell Mulcahy introduced a lot of, um, techniques that uh, music videos are still using he was the first guy to like letterbox a, a music oh. video you know <laughs> that kind of stuff um but uh and i'm surprised that he didn't from this go on to have like a david fincher like career instead he just ends up being like exploitation guy and you know like yeah. genre dude i mean i guess ricochet was the one that it you know, feels like should have put him somewhere right but i don't think that movie performed that well or was it very well, you know, hmm. it wasn't received like, you know, a great big summer blockbuster. Sure. Um, but I mean, I would definitely say you got to check out this movie. There can be only one. There should have been only one. You're absolutely <laughs> right. Uh, B-Movie Vault. This was uh, the only one that needed to be. And it holds up today. And uh, it's still a very, very good uh, example of uh, 80s adventure Sword and sorcery. Should there be only one? Stay tuned for like six months from now. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. We'll find out. <laughs> we will find out. Oh, they put Michael Ironside on wires and he's like flying through this like Blade Runner. Oh. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I think that was a uh, free show recommended. Yep. Hell yeah, it was. Okay. You got to uh, see. Uh, that means the rules are you got to watch uh, Highlander. Them's the rules. Next week, we're going to be watching a movie that's chosen by Sean. What movie are we watching next week? Next week, we're going to be watching Butcher, Baker, Nightmare Maker. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> I told okay. you. I told you. I wanted to see the rest of that movie. So. All right. Or we're going to watch it next Don't week. I don't about this movie. So. Nope. Uh, than what you were saying off mic. Uh, there you go. <laughs> okay. All right. So it's that, better than what I was saying yeah, off yeah, mic. I caught the end of that conversation. So. Oh, yeah. No, it's better than that. <laughs> All right, I, we'll, I think we'll find out. We'll find out. Stay tuned uh, next week on the Saturday Night Freak Show. Until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.